guys, Jerry Gang and your bushcraft, and I'm back out again in the woods. Tonight I'm out with Ray, Ray's Wild Way, and we're going to try something a little bit different. I decided I was going to do a army surplus, military surplus only camp, just using kit issued to the to the military. Uh, I put a poll on my channel asking, shall I keep it British Army surplus or any country? And uh, British Army surplus won with 61% of the vote. So tonight we're just going to be using. British Army issued old school military surplus kit. Everything from old school foam roll mats to the old right angle torches, hexy stove, totally keeping it old school military surplus. I mean, a lot of my gear is military surplus anyway, as you know, but it's never fully. I mean, I've got like a really comfortable modern inflatable sleep mat. I ain't got that tonight. Uh, no LED torches, no bright torches. We've got the old school. Uh, it's military rations for food. Uh, yeah. That's what, that's what we're going to be doing. Something different. I hope you enjoy it. So come along, Wiz. Uh, let's go. All right, guys. There's my pack. It's a British Army short back Bergen with both rocket pouches on as well. They add an additional 10 litres. So I think that's about around about 120 litre or something absolutely ridiculous like that. But just a really, really qual quality, well-made pack. I mean, you get one of them and that's going to last you a long, long time. Virtually indestructible. I've not got much in the top pocket, but if I wanted, I could really pack that out. Get even more in here. I mean, this comes right up. I've just put the, the army roll mat under for now. Yeah. I think that's pretty much one of your best, your best burgers you can get for like all round kind of out while camping, bushcraft, things like that that's going to set you up to start with. Okay then, I'm going to talk you through the sleep system I'm going to be using tonight. Obviously all British Army kit. Uh, first of all, the famous bouncing bomb. That's the British Army Arctic sleeping bag and it is gigantic. This is fully compressed as tight as it'll go and it's still massive but it's worth the wait for the extra warmth it's going to give you. It's May in the UK now so it's overkill but uh, I've got it anyway, so I'm going to be well warm tonight. It's, uh, yeah, just a quality bit of kit. I've had it for years and years, and it still, still keeps you toasty. And next up, we've got the Gore-Tex Bivy bag. This is the olive green version. It comes in DPM as well, and the MCP camo, obviously, now. This is, as you can see, I think the NSN numbers wore off a bit there, but, yeah. 1993, this was made. Cover sleeping bag. And it literally is just a waterproof... Uh, cover to put your sleeping bag inside so if it rains you get wet as long as you're inside here and it's really long so you could you could get your, your kit in there with you if you want to stuff your bergen right down the bottom if you wanted uh this one's it's massive so that would keep you nice and dry i've got here this is just a cheap uh couple of quid plastic tarp a small one just as an extra layer of comfort just underneath the bivy bag but you could just put that straight on floor it wouldn't really matter Next we've got a the Army Shoe roll mat. So there's the NSN number. This one's a 2006. A lot of the uh, the soldiers now won't be using these. They'll be using inflatable mats and things. But this were this is this is what they would have used quite a few years ago. I must admit I've not slept on a foam mat for a long time, so it's going to be a bit different comfort-wise to my normal inflatable mat. But thought I'd do it. Keep it all all Army surplus. That one is actually, I've just recently bought that, it's on issue now, it's in tip-top condition, which is cool. The main shelter is going to be the army issue uh, basher, or tarp, or shelter sheet, whatever you want to call it. This one's in DPM camo, but inside, this is obviously an MTP camo stuff sack. When I bought the DPM one, it didn't, it didn't have a stuff sack. We've got the MTP basher as well, which Ray's going to be sleeping in, uh, but this is the DPM one. I must much prefer DPM, as you all know. And then finally, yeah, the bungees. A quick and easy way to set your basher up. I mean, some of the squaddies, when it's raining, they're gonna to wanna to get the get the shelter up fast as possible. There's nothing wrong with using bungees. It, you set it up in no time at all. You need an extra bungee, connect it to another one, go to another tree, to another tree, easy as that. Uh, so that's that. There's the, the sleep system. Right, and I'm gonna show you the cook system that we're gonna use for tonight. We've got to start with, this is the uh, DPM Camo PLCE water bottle pouch. Uh, 
these obviously aren't current issue, these were replaced a long time ago, but I prefer the VPM, as you probably know. So this is the, the water bottle pouch. Inside here, we have got, just bear with me because it can be a bit tricky, the, the lid for the Crusader, that's not arm issue, that'd be something that you'd privately purchase extra to go with it. But I'll show you what, I'll show you in a second. So that is the, uh, the British Army issue water bottle with the plastic cup that goes on top. And then as an additional thing, what goes underneath is a BCB Crusader cup. I've got a few of these, this one's seen a bit of action. So it's a bit of, it's a bit dirty, but yeah, everything just slots perfectly together. It's a really well thought out design. So that's a litre of water. There's a Crusader and I can cook in this. is stainless steel, I can cook in that if I want to. I'll just use it as a cup, but I've already got a cup there, you see. So if I just want to boil a small amount of water, that'd be what I'd use. And for the stove, there's a good old Hexi stove. This is the Army Issue Hexamin stove. This one's like been kept in storage a long time. I bought a few of these. Uh, it says two euro on the back, but for two pound each. Uh, and this is still in the original wax paper. It came in wax paper to get some kind of waterproofing. And inside there would be your stove. There's a small attachment to sit the Crusader cup in. And also obviously, plenty of hexi tabs uh, enough for many many brews and meals so that's the that's the stove there's a water bottle here we have some just traditional British Army mess tins these are aluminium the Dutch Army actually made them in stainless the same type but in stainless which are a lot better these are Ali uh, a bit, a bit stained a bit dirty but they do, they do the job this is the perfect perfect size for if you just want to boil a ration pack uh, but to be honest if I'm just boiling up and obviously use that as a lid to cover that to boil water you've probably seen these a million times everyone's got these but if I'm being honest I much prefer just to boil water in the Crusader with the lid on no time at all and then over here I've just got a few bits of British Army ration pack stuff it's not a full ration pack uh, because I've actually, believe it or not, run out of British Army ration packs. <laughs> so I've just got a few bits and bobs out of one. That's a tomato, a pasta salad, uh, a sticky toffee pudding. And I've got a sausage and beans up there, which is not with this for some reason, but yeah. And then the spoon that comes with it, that comes inside the ration pack. So there you go, that's, uh, that'd be what the soldier gets you with. That'd be what he'd be cooking his, his food in and making his brews in. Uh, plenty of brews. That holds about a pint, so that'd be a... <laughs> Hefty brew. Yeah, that's that. Right guys, next up we'll show you the uh, the lighting we're going to be using for tonight, the torches. I always bring, nowadays, uh, torches have got so good with LEDs, torches, and they're so bright and they run forever on very little batteries, but back in the day, we would have had one of these bad boys. Nice Tech 2 D cell batteries. Me and Ray even had these as kids, didn't we? Uh, this is, as far as I know, this is the Army Issue version. Uh, there's the, the number on the side there. And I just think it's, it's just known as a right angled torch. I think I don't think it's got a specific name. This one's made by Limpac in England. And it is just literally as, as simple as it comes. It's just two D cell batteries, two modes. You've got, you turn it up once and there's your, your Morse code mode. Turn it again and it's uh, full beam, which is not very bright compared to today's standards. This is the US version. I know I'm keeping it British Army, but I just thought I'd bring it along for comparison. So they're similar still. They're both, both right angle torches. This has got a larger lens area because it's got different filters, like a red filter or things like that that you can change up. They both come with spare bulbs in the bottom as well, and they've both got those in still. But yeah, that's what you would have, uh, I mean, they've been using these ever. You see these on videos from Vietnam on the US one. I'm not sure what year that would have been introduced to the British Army. But I do know later on, there was this issue, this torch issued to the army. And it, again, it's, it's not an LED, I don't think it's a small bulb. And this one's got a uh, Night Tech 1998 on the, on the number there. So this would have probably been one of the last torches maybe before they started using LED uh, torches and just, just a lot better for, for lighting. This, this has got a filter, it's got a, a switch where you switch between a red and a, and a white. Uh, yeah, very very basic torches. It's what the what the guys would have had. 
So we're gonna, that's what we're gonna be using tonight. Mm. A couple more bits of kit I wanna show you guys. The machete, or galock as it's sometimes called. Now this is a replica, this isn't in an actual army issue one. If you wanna zoom in there. So obviously, I think some of the originals have got dates on and things, but this is this is literally the exact size and weight of the British Army issue one, but this is just a, uh, a replica. But it's it's razor sharp, perfect for it would have been hacking hacking away in the in the jungle maybe, or just splitting splitting wood for a fire, making shelters. It's uh, it's really a solid bit of kit. And it comes in the I think this is a piece of PLCE uh, webbing pouch. Oh, actually, this says. Uh, yeah, yeah, the frog bayonet pouch that, that comes in. It works perfect for that. You just clip it on your belt or onto your webbing with the uh, with the clips. And then we've got this. I recently got this. I've seen this on lots of uh, pictures and videos from the past. This is the this is obviously a new version of the British Army knife, which were issued. I think it was still issued to soldiers up until like the eighties and things like that. And it's it's just a really it's a really a basic class knife, but I'm well impressed with it. It comes with a really razor sharp main knife. It comes with a can opener and a marlin spike. For those that don't know what that's for, that's for getting uh, knots out of, out of rope to, to weave into the knot to loosen it up to. Now, we're issued to obviously sailors in the Navy. Uh, and, and I'm not sure, other, not sure what other parts of the military they, they would have had these issued, but were definitely issued to the the regular soldiers. And it's just a basic but well thought out, well made knife. I mean, that's that's got everything you need: can opener to get into your food, your main knife for doing everything, and a marlin spike for getting you in your shelter building, maybe, or obviously if you're a sailor, the, the knots on the ropes. I do actually, actually have a British Army, like a Bowie, like a, I'm not sure actual name is, but the main British Army knife as well, which I haven't got with me today, but I thought this would be plenty. So, little knife for camp duties, big one for chopping wood. The woods are looking absolutely beautiful. Nice and green. It's almost June here in the UK, so it's lovely and warm as well. Perfect night for it. Hi right, guys, there's the shelter up. Looking pretty good. Nice and simple, just between two trees. Obviously, trees aren't always perfectly positioned, so all I did here, look, we'll just use two bungees joined together. One bungee over to that tree. And then on the bottom corners, a bungee on each one. And I've temp pegged to hold it in place. And find a stick to give me a bit of headroom. And I think that is just right. Just square away my kit now. Anything I don't need, I'm going to put back in my Bergen. And anything I do need is going to live on this ground sheet next to my bivy. Got the water bottle out, I'm about to get to a, get a brew on and some food. Yeah, keep it nice and organised. It's on a slight incline, so I don't know whether I'm going to be better sleeping that way or the, the other, di other direction, but we'll see. If I need to adjust it, I can. I'll take a second. Nothing worse than sleeping uh, like a slightly downhill with your head the wrong way. You wake up with an absolute terrible headache. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you've all been there. Right, brew time. All right, guys, just thought I'd show you a closer look at the Hexi stove. Some of you might not have seen it. I assume a lot of you have, though. So it's a brand new one. It comes with the... That's, it's on the top, and that's the Crusader cup attachment, like I mentioned. Sits perfectly in there. It's the main stove. Obviously Hexy, this, this is really old school Hexy. And it's been in that waxed paper for a great many years. Obviously this is uh, pretty toxic stuff, so you wanna 
you don't want to get near your mouth or well, wash my hands after this but yeah it's a really old school on that look at it but the fuel tablets inside will work perfect so you just find, find yourself a nice flat spot which this isn't perfect at the minute but crusader attachment on top put your hexi in light them you say this it's nicer there nice and simple but really well thought out so here's a side view of the basher obviously having that stick in there keeps keeps everything nice and taut so if it does rain the water will just run straight off we've got a brew on as well boil a lot quicker with the lid and that's just half a hexy tab that's all you need for one brew really save the other half for later for when we cook some food all right guys cheers chap cheers a nice brewski in the woods can't beat being outside we're gonna have a campfire later as well when it gets a bit darker like i said earlier it's almost june so the nights are really long so we're probably good to like almost 10 pm maybe for light it's only five now right i'm gonna enjoy this coffee and i think we're gonna get some food on got a bit of food on the go now a ration pack just using the army shoe aluminium mess tins Put the ration pack in the small one and then just using the larger one as a lid to make it cook quicker which it is about boiling now so i'll just let it boil for a few minutes to make sure it's nice and hot food will be served so that's ready i just poured the water out of it into the large one let it boil for a bit could use that to make a brew leaves in it actually <laughs> might need to pick them out okay guys a few hours have passed now We've got a nice established campfire just with these a uh, few rocks around for a bit of a fireplace He's been chopping wood, cutting a few bits up. Yeah, we've got a few logs for the fire. Not many, we need to get them all. Yeah, we do need to get a few more to be honest. But yeah. All that's left to do now is relax and enjoy the enjoy the evening being outside. We'll have a few more beers. Oh yes, we may have a few cheeky beers. Definitely, why not? <laughs> and then looking forward to testing out the old school torches. See how they fare. Good, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if they're good enough for the soldiers back in the day, mate. Exactly. They were good enough for us. Right guys, as you can see we've we've literally lost the light now. It's about half past ten at night. So we're now gonna show you you literally can't see that, but we're gonna show you the power of the old school torches. I've got the the British Army one, Ray's got the US Army one, we're just gonna show you them for a quick comparison. So leave yours off Ray a second, we'll come around here look to where my basher is and show you what they were like. Now, it's not the brightest thing in the world, but you you can see, it's enough light to see what you're doing. And obviously, I'm guessing the whole point would have been to be covert. These come with red f filters as well that you could put on to be even more stealthy. But like I said, it's not going to light up the world, but it is. I can see my kit, I can see my, my stove, I can see my mess tin, I can see my bivy bag. It's enough. So if I turn this one off now, and Ray's going to turn the US one on. And that's that one. I think, if I'm being honest, that's slightly brighter. Maybe a slightly bigger bulb, maybe. Yeah, it's nothing to work. It's nothing like a modern LED torch, but it's it's pretty good. It's light up, Ray. See, it's like, it's not totally dark yet. Obviously, we've still got a little bit of light, but we're under the tree cover. But yeah, I mean, 
back in the day, these they've got a special place for us, haven't we? We used yes, to have these as kids, yeah. didn't we? Definitely. Running army cadets and things, we... It's unweighted about them, Early 90s, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, they have, because these have got two D yeah. cells in them. Yeah. I like them, though. Great. Good stuff. But yeah, technology moves on. You've got, you, I mean, your phone's probably 20 times brighter. Mm. The camera on the phone I'm filming with is probably 20 times brighter than this, these, but for what they were back in the day, they worked. Now, I, I have no idea how long two, them 2D cells are going to last in that. How many hours are you going to get out of it? I don't know. But yeah, I thought it'd be interesting for people to see. Yeah. Turn them both on at once. Let's see what I can... Looks like they are, but turn yours on, right? Let's... So, yeah. That's pretty much what we got. <laughs> Right, I think we're going to call it for tonight, guys, and we'll see you in the morning. I've moved my biffy bag from the position I had it in earlier, because I was on a slight incline. I think I'm going to lie there, and obviously with my feet facing on the downhill bit, just to get a slightly better night's sleep, hopefully. Right, see you guys in the morning. And good morning, guys. Well, not a bad night's sleep, to be honest. What about you? About two and a half hours. <laughs> two and a half hours. <laughs> yeah, uh, not too bad. Yeah. Like I said last night, I ended up moving the bivy bag to a different position. It seemed to work. So, all that's left to do now is get tidied away. Uh, and get back to reality. Yes. What a cracking night, though, mate. Yeah, really, really enjoyed that. Really enjoyed that. Really did. Night. It's nice morning as well, isn't it? It is. It's beautiful, mate. Oh, Nothing worse than when you wake up and it's raining. You've got to pack your kit away yeah. in the rain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's been a great night. I'll be out again soon, hopefully. Yeah, there's the uh, fire pit. All the wood's burnt away. Oh, it's smoking, so I'll some water in it. We'll tidy that up. All right. I'll best get her cracked on, packing away. All right. All packed away. Ready for the off. That's where my basher were, just leaving a little bit of flat grass and stuff, but no trace whatsoever. Let's go. Well, that's it for another one, guys. Thank you very much for watching, if you've watched this far. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed doing the army surplus camp. I think next time I'll do it We military surplus kit from different countries not just uh, the british but yeah back to reality now time to go home uh, i'll leave you with a few pictures from the night but yeah appreciate you all watching really do take care see you next time <laughs>